Praise and welcome the Lord Jesus tonight. Oh, we welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We come and we give you a shout of praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Wow. Wow, is anybody happy to be at Jesus Nights tonight? Welcome on behalf of Michael and Jessica Kulianos and all of the Jesus Image team. Welcome, welcome Houston. Welcome wherever you're from, whatever church you've come from. Welcome those that are joining online. Welcome wherever you are overflow wherever you are tonight we welcome you and most of all we welcome the lord jesus christ and we put our eyes on him from the very beginning of this you know i just want to say that there is a great unity we've been feeling as we've come together a great unity with heaven a great unity with each other and uh, i'm so excited uh, to, to see what God's going to do. And I just want to release that expectation. I want to release that expectation in your heart. And uh, Jesus is amazing. We haven't got it all yet. Holy Spirit is amazing. We haven't received it all yet. We have a good, good heavenly Father. Amen. We haven't seen it all yet. So thank you for being here in reverence and hunger and honor for him. And I just want to say, be expecting online, be expecting, jump right in. There's no distance. Wherever you are across the country, we welcome you. Wherever you are watching from around the world, we welcome you here tonight. Right in this room, there's going to be no distance in spirit. Amen. Let's lift a hand to heaven right now. We just dedicate by the precious blood and the authority of the name of Jesus. We just dedicate this time to you, Lord, and you will walk in our midst. And Lord, we thank you that we will all just be wrapped up in the goodness of your love and your blessedness and everything you've ordained for every life. We touch and agree for it right now. We thank you there's no limitation we thank you, Jesus, you are the open heaven. And as we look at you, we thank you. We thank you for things you've longed to do, that you come and do them very personal, intimately with people here tonight. Great grace upon your people in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Praise God. you guys to the front if you want to come worship there's some space up here to come and just worship Jesus you're more than welcome to
king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on the cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished
never gets tired of hearing it.
lift your voice, lift your voice to Jesus.
Jesus, sing your own song. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. He's worthy of every song. He's worthy of every heart. Let your voice arise. Let your song arise. Let's just sing in the spirit. Come on, take about the next two or three minutes and sing in the spirit all over the room. Come on. That's right, lift your voice. Lift your voice, sing in the spirit. Just keep singing, come on. Come on. Releasing mysteries, the mysteries of heaven. That's what the scripture teaches. Every voice, every voice, every voice, every voice. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Wonderful Lord, wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Jesus, give you praise. Help me on the instruments. Wonderful Lord, give you praise. You're worthy of glory and honor, power, praise, and majesty is yours forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. There is nobody like you. There is no one like you. Oh, just lift your hands to the Lord. There is no one like you. There are none beside you. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb to receive all blessing and glory and honor and power. Wisdom and riches belongs to you forever and ever. 
ever and ever. Lord, tonight, just lift your hands in his presence. Lord, tonight we've come to look at you and love you, to not take our eyes off of you. You are the fairest of 10,000, and there's nowhere else to look. faithful friend who sticks closer than a brother. Wonderful Jesus. Faithful Lord. Come on, just close your eyes and forget about the meeting and forget about me and forget about Jesus' image and just look at Jesus tonight. Wonderful Lord, come in now and be our great obsession as we look to you in awe. Holy are you forever. Fill this building with your tangible glory. Fill our hearts with your fire tonight. Would you just yield now and give the Lord your body, your mind, your thoughts, your future, your pain, your needs you came in with. Just give them all to Jesus right now. Marvelous for words. Marvelous for words. Too wonderful. Too wonderful for comprehension. Like nothing ever seen or heard. Like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Can fathom, Who can fathom the depths of your love? Depths of your love. Oh, lift your hands and sing it to him. You're beautiful. You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty enthroned above. Majesty enthroned above. I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in love. Every voice, every voice lifted to him. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due. I stand in awe of you. Because you are beautiful. Description to marvelous for words, to wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can go
give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, just give him something costly tonight. I prayed tonight before I got here that we'd go so deep into his presence that we'd forget about everything. We've all come in tonight with needs and pain and different things. Maybe it's sickness or you're running from the Lord. Maybe your family's broken. Whatever it might be, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. And so, a wonderful, saintly hero, a woman named Catherine Kuhlman used to say that miracles happen when Jesus becomes more real to us than our need. And so the presence of Jesus is Jesus himself. And there's no more sure and consistent path into his presence than to worship him. And so let's go a little deeper. Is that okay? Is that okay? Just close your eyes, lift your hands to heaven. Dami, oh Lord my God.
time then sinks my soul. softly right now just begin to love on him with, with with your words come on just if the Holy Spirit gives you a song let it out holy 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 are you forever Holy Spirit, I ask that you would move like a river through this building and the building across the street. Come on, all your attention, all eyes on Jesus, all eyes on Jesus. Just yield, 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 yield. You don't have to pray right now. You don't have to cry out. Just yield. The Lord is here. Yield, yield, yield. Let Him fill you to overflowing. love in you tonight? Do you have a little more love in you tonight to pour out on the feet of Jesus? Oh, Jesus, they are so majestic. Those of you watching in your homes around the world, turn your house into a temple. Just don't watch. Worship with us tonight. I sense the the joy, the satisfaction of the Holy Spirit as we lift the one He loves, lift the one that He adores, the one that He has promised to glorify, Jesus Himself, the majestic one. Sing it, Majesty.
softly, every voice, majesty. Jesus, give you praise. here now he comes to live in these moments again again majesty Lord, a house with your worship now. Majesty. Majesty. Worship you. Majesty. Majesty. Forever. Forever I change for your love. The present. One more time, every voice, one more time. We're with him now. Keep singing. Again, again, we come with nothing, we come with nothing tonight. Majesty. one more. Make it your prayer. Make it your prayer. Majesty. worshiping and you're able would you stand to your feet and just honor the Lord's presence here would you just close your eyes face just let your heart look at Jesus where does our help come from our help comes from the Lord our help cometh from above Tonight, Jesus, with hands raised, faces lifted, hearts lifted, we say, Lord, from the depths of our souls, our help comes from the Lord. Our help cometh from above. And so tonight we look to you, Jesus, the, the beautiful one, the worthy one, the faithful one, the wounded one and the risen one, the perfect one, the shiny one, the loving Lord. And we look to you tonight 
and we thank you and we've come to adore you and you promised that if we would gather in your name that you would be here even in the midst of us so I ask you Holy Spirit to consume us tonight in your holy fire deliver people from the wicked one tonight from this world from sickness and bondage all for your name's sake do it Lord Jesus let the word go forth in power tonight I thank you for hundreds that will come to Jesus tonight hundreds and hundreds thousands around the world watch I thank you in advance for miracles tonight that will bring great glory to your name I thank you for a church that will burn with first love come on you need to grab this one right here I thank you that nobody will leave the same tonight that everybody here would be touched tangibly by the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus and Lord we ask that Jesus would receive every bit of glory and that we would love you so faithfully be glorified tonight in Jesus name and I want you to take the next minute and offer the Lord a sacrificial praise and seal everything we just prayed come on come on lift your voice lift your voice Oh, Jesus, thank you. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you. We praise you, Jesus. We glorify you. We honor you. We love you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. Oh, I feel that. The earth is filled. The earth is filled with Your glory. Pour out Your glory tonight. Your wonderful presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you happy tonight? All right, you can be seated. Wow. Yes, amen. Can we let the worship team know how thankful we are for that offer? Can you take that one? Yeah. Well, good evening. I said good evening. Jesus is here. I said Jesus is here. Whatever that meant. You think Jesus is from a Texan ranch, huh? Aren't you just happy to be here? Come on, why don't, why don't you just, why don't, I, I feel the Lord and I, I borderline begged him tonight before I came. Oh, Jesus, touch me tonight too. Touch me tonight too. Take us so deep that everything else fades away. Why don't you just let the touch of the Holy Spirit settle on you right now? Maybe you've never been in a meeting like this maybe you think we sang too long well heaven's gonna be a real challenge for you <laughs> yeah we're not in a rush are we see the Holy Spirit 
is described in so many different ways. And uh, none of the descriptions are a manual or a PowerPoint. Us preachers love a good old PowerPoint. That Pastor Randy, they make us feel a little smarter, don't they? But he, he is a river and a dove and wonderful oil and the, the balm of the high places, the balm of Gilead. And he, he is a fire. And he is a breeze and a wind. He's not only a fire, but an all-consuming fire. He's desiring to be known by you. I want to make that really clear tonight because it's easier for us to believe that, that he wants to be known by a people or a nation or by a church, but he wants to be known by you, individually known by you. He wants you to know his touch because he is a person. He wants you to know his voice because he is a person. He wants you to know his desires because he has a will and a heart. He wants to be known by you. So for about the next 10 minutes, I'm, I'm going to ask that no one move around unless it's an absolute emergency. And uh, the Lord's going to do mighty things in our midst. Amen. Uh, I want to thank the Needhams, Pastor Randy and Miss Lucy, for having us. Can we all thank God for them? Thank you. Such an honor to be here. Pastor Randy serves on our board, and Miss Lucy might as well. <laughs> and the whole family. All of you, I love you guys. And what a joy to bring Jesus Nights here. Uh, our first two have been in Texas, which uh, can't be by accident. I say this all over. America, I'm not sure you Texans need any more state pride. So may, maybe I shouldn't have said that. But I feel it's the Lord's will to be here. What an honor it is. Thank you for opening the house. And what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful house the Lord has given you. We came to worship the Lord tonight, and the Lord is after hearts. I'm not sure uh, this generation has heard enough of the gospel or even knows what the gospel is. There's a good chance that if I lined up 10 pastors today and said, what is the gospel, I might get seven different versions. That's a problem because there's only one gospel, just one. And the gospel is a person named Jesus. I want you to hear that for a moment. The gospel is a person. If you take Jesus out of the gospel, and the word gospel means good news. I said the word gospel means good news. That's an understatement. It is much better than the English version of good. The gospel is heaven's song. The gospel is amazing news. The gospel is so good that it will take forever for you to figure out one one millionth of its beauty. And if you take Jesus out of the gospel, it's no longer good news. It's really bad news. Because the news is that we have to cleanse ourselves. The news would be that we have to redeem us. And you can't redeem yourself. 
The whole premise of redemption is the perfect one for the imperfect. How many of you have come to the realization just today that you're not perfect? <laughs> How many of you figured out the moment your kids could talk that they weren't perfect? Prior to them talking, just them keeping you up at night, making that sound that no earthly substance can drown out, not a wall, not earplugs, and there's nothing created that can drown out that sound. <laughs> Perhaps that's what David meant when he said, in sin have I been conceived. <laughs> we come out needing Jesus. There's nobody perfect here. And so I want to read this scripture to you because I have good news tonight. I came to bring you good news that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. He still saves today. So I want you to listen to Psalm 32. Verse 1, if we could throw that on the screen for those of you watching. Where's my camera? Right there. For those of you watching, we love you. And if, if the gospel pierces your heart tonight, and I believe it is, we want you to reach out to us. We want you to get on your knees tonight in just a few moments and ask Jesus into your heart. You'll never be the same. Psalm 32 verse 1 says this, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered or atoned for. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, listen carefully now, when I kept silent, over what? Over his sin. When I kept silent, my bones grew old, and through my groaning all the day long, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength or vitality was turned into drought, the drought of summer. Oh, I love this verse. I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions or my breaking of God's law to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. I want to stop there for a moment. Sin is not a weakness. Sin will kill you. Listen carefully. Sin will kill you. Sin takes no prisoners. It takes prisoners so tightly that an earthly prison sounds like a paradise in comparison to the bondage in a human soul. Sin does not come to give you a bad day. Sin will send you straight to hell. This is the gospel. I mean, this is the truth. This is the word of God. You say, well, I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm doing better, but, but better's just not good enough. How many of you have discovered that trying not to sin, if that's the, the only focus of your spiritual life, how many of you discovered that the harder you try not to, you fell again and again and again and again? That's why the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That means if you live your life merely trying not to sin, you'll become the sin you're trying to avoid forever. But if you give everything to Jesus, that sin will burn up in the fire of his presence. You're free from sin by starving it because you feast on Jesus alone. That's the way to freedom. That's the way to freedom. Perhaps you're there tonight, you're saying, well, I've, I've been to an altar. You've heard me say this for years now. It will help you to hear it again. Altars do not save people. 
How do I know that? Because the scripture doesn't teach that God so loved the world that he sent an altar. Or the altar call. I know I'm in Texas. <laughs> That's risky business talking like this. But altar calls don't save either. For all of my theological friends, you can check off the right boxes. That only means you believe Jesus is bio, just like the devil. It's not enough to believe the Lord's bio. How do I know this? What did Nicodemus say when he came to Jesus in the night? We know that you must be from the Lord because nobody can do what you're doing unless they've been sent by God. Who was the we that Nicodemus was talking about? His fellow priests. And what did Jesus, or I should say, how did Jesus answer? Did he say, oh, thanks for believing I'm from the Lord? He said, you must be born again or you cannot see the kingdom. Jesus is basically saying, I don't need any more fans who believe my stats. I want you. Churches don't save, and I pastor one. Church is vital, but churches don't save. Only Jesus saves. You say, I know the Bible inside out. Do you know the author? You say, I uh, prayed the prayer. And prayers don't save either. You have to talk to him. You say, I've been baptized. I love what Steve Hill said once. Oh, you can go to hell with baptismal water dripping off your clothes if you don't meet Jesus in the water. You say, man, you're cornering me tonight. No, no, I'm not cornering you. The Holy Spirit's cornering you with his love. You see, by the end of, I would say, in about four minutes, you're going to have, you're not, I should say, going to have the opportunity to disagree or agree or accept or refuse to accept my message because my message in, it, in and of itself won't save you. No, actually, you're going to be faced with the choice to walk past the wounded Christ or accept him and he's in the room. You, you actually have a choice tonight. You, you, you're gonna say yes to Jesus or I'm walking right past you even though you're wounded and raised at the same time. Jesus is here tonight. I said Jesus is here tonight. He promised to be here tonight. In fact, it's his presence that we all feel. It's his presence that makes this room feel so much different than that interstate out there. Doesn't it just feel so much better here? Why? Because Jesus is here. And he makes all things new. He is life itself. I love the passage in the book of Acts that says, And the place they prayed was shaken. We, we narrowed that down, I should say dwindled that down to the walls shook when the church prayed. No, it doesn't say that. It says the place they prayed shook. The air reacts when Jesus comes in. Our hearts react when Jesus comes in. Mean people get really nice when Jesus comes in. I don't know about you, I walked in wounded tonight and in need of a touch from the Lord and I come into his presence and remember why I'm alive and he makes us come alive. That's because he's here. Out loud, I just want you for a moment to close your eyes and say, Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Say it again, Jesus is here. Say it again, Jesus is here. And Jesus is certainly here tonight. Well, think about this for a second. Before you were ever born, this is an amazing thought that only the Holy Spirit can reveal to you. But I know he will because he loves you. Before you were ever born, the Lord knew you'd be in this room tonight. Oh my gosh, what a savior. Daddy, I was right, however you did that. 
the, the, the Lord knew, not only did He know you'd be in the room, He knew you'd be in that seat next to that person who forgot to put on deodorant. Don't get distracted and look at them. Stay with me. Stay with me. No, no, really, think about that. I want you to think about that for a moment. The scripture says, before I formed you, I knew you. The Bible says, before the foundations of the world, Christ died in the heart of God. Before there was a cherub, a throne, a seraph, a living creature, an angel, the earth, and a, or a planet, God knew you'd be right there tonight, sitting in that seat, listening to his glorious message. I want you to think about everything your parents had to go through to get you here. Think of everything your grandparents went through in their lives, all of that leading up to this moment, so that you would hear the gospel. My God is right. The wisdom of God. Everything God had to orchestrate. How many of you look back at your life and say, I could have died 10 to 20 times had it not been for Jesus? Anybody like me who should be in jail or dead without Jesus? Well, here you are. Here you are tonight, sitting in that seat. Why? To say you came to a Jesus image event? Spare me. I wouldn't even come to just come to a Jesus image event. I came here to be with him. And that's why God set you up tonight. In fact, listen, listen, listen to the love of God. Jesus said no man can come to Jesus unless the Father approves it. And then the, Jesus said no man comes to the Father unless they come by Jesus. That means they both had to say yes to you being in the room. Friend, friend, listen to me. The eternal trinity is in on this moment and your soul is hanging in the balance and if you don't want to, you don't have to leave the same. I say this every Sunday night. Jesus doesn't change lives. He replaces lives. He does much better than tweak us or change us or help us along. He takes you, listen, listen, listen. He takes you and me. And all we have to do is sin once, not even by action, just by thought or motive. He takes us, who is a sinner, and by the way, your porn is not your sin. That's a sin. Sin is much deeper. That's a symptom. Those are sins, your lust. That's not sin in and of itself. That's a sin. Greed, fear. I mean, the whole world's afraid right now. That's a sin. According to the word, that's a sin. All of us, all of us need a savior. And when you come to Jesus, he don't just brush off some of the bad stuff and Hold your hand along like you read in those little children's books. Jesus takes you when you come to him and nails the old you to a cross by faith. Listen. And the Bible says that you die with him. That your sin dies with him. And the you who is a sinner dies with him. And the Bible teaches that we're buried with him. And thank God we are raised to newness of life with him. This is called being born again, not changed. The Bible says old things pass away. And all things become new. The Bible says we are new creations in Christ Jesus. That is what it means to come to Jesus, my friend. And so tonight, listen carefully. Listen carefully. Are you ready to stand before the Lord and be your own attorney? 
I've had money and I've had nothing. I can tell you, none of it takes care of sin. I have not been known and I've been known. That does not deal with sin. There is nothing I possess to remove my own sin. But I know of a substance, listen carefully, that still flows from Emmanuel's veins. It is a fountain that still flows today. And the Bible says, though my sins be as scarlet, in other words, though I'm a filthy rag, you shall make me whiter than snow. There is one remedy that deals with the chain and the stain of sin. It is the blood of Jesus. And when you stand before the Lord, you want the blood of Jesus speaking on your behalf. You want Jesus there at your right hand as your advocate. You don't want to be your own. And to those who come to Jesus, on that day, the Father will look at them as he looks at his Son. He will see his Son in them and them in his own Son. That's why Jesus still has a body. You can be free tonight. Listen, friend, with every head bowed and eye closed, Listen to me, you can be free tonight. Those of you in the overflow building, you can be free tonight. Don't let the building keep you from coming to Jesus. You can leave brand new. You can leave with a cleansed conscience. You can know that you'll stand before the Lord in the righteousness of Jesus. You say, what do I have to do tonight? I can't come here and lie to you. Flying all the way from Florida, I had to fly to Dallas today and then drive here because of the weather. I'm not going to lie to you. What does Jesus want? Everything. Everything. Do you know why God is awakening a generation? Because they're finally being offered something to die for. I'm not here to sugarcoat. I'm, not, I'm asking you in your seat tonight, are you willing to give Jesus everything, even if it's your own life? Because that's what he requires. You give him yours, and he gives you his, and I promise you, his is much better than anything you'll ever give him. Don't, don't stay like you are tonight. And don't walk by the loving Lord. With every head bowed and eye closed, you say, Michael, I'm done with the games. I want my sin dealt with. I want to give Jesus everything tonight. I want to leave here cleansed with no more guilt and no more shame. I want to come into meetings like this without shame, knowing that I've been washed by his precious blood. I want you to lift your hand tonight and say, that's me, that's me. Thank you, Father. I want everyone to stand right now. You in the overflow building, stand up, would you please? Everybody there, listen very carefully, carefully to me. Children, if you're a child here and you can understand what I'm saying, I want you to look at whoever brought you. It might be your parents, it might be your grandparents, it might be a babysitter or a friend, I don't know. But I want you to look at whoever brought you tonight. If you feel like you want to give your heart to Jesus, I want you to look that person in the eye and say, Mom or Dad, whoever, I want to give my life to Jesus tonight. For those of you who brought somebody here tonight, or you know someone here tonight, that you believe needs the Lord, you know them, the fruit of their life, is the proof and you know that they need Jesus tonight or there's a doubt because you've seen the way they're living. I want you to look them in the eye and do the work of an evangelist. Look them in the eye. If you have to move a few aisles and say, hey, do you need to give your life to Jesus tonight? And I want you to come down with them. This might be the first time you've ever led someone to the Lord. What better place than to do it right here in his glory. If you raise your hand, or I'm speaking to any of you, any of you, if this is, 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 is in your heart, if you feel the Holy Spirit drawing you, I want you to, if, if you raise your hand or you wish you did, I want you to get down here right now. Come on, come on, give your life to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. Come on. They're coming from all over. Oh, come on, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Ushers, help them, help them, help them. Help them come close, help them come close. Come on, church, give the Lord praise. Come to Jesus tonight. Come to Jesus tonight. Come get free tonight. Come get free tonight. Look at this, this is beautiful. Young and old, young and old, come give your life to Jesus. 
church, this is what it's all about. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Don't you stay in your seat. Get real with God. If you need the Lord tonight, nobody else matters. Step out of your seat. I don't care if you've been in church your whole life. Get down here tonight and give the Lord your life. Look, they're coming from all over. Those of you in the other building, I want you to go to the altar right now. Get out of your seats and go to the altar and give your heart to the Lord. Oh, guys, we have to give the Lord praise. The Bible says when one, when one repents, when one sinner repents, all of heaven rejoices. Oh, give the Lord praise. This is wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Isn't this wonderful? I said, isn't this wonderful? They're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. You know, the Bible, Jesus said, what good is it if a man gains the whole world and loses his soul? And then he said, what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. That means praise ye the Lord. I think we should give Jesus one more offering of praise. Thank you, Lord. I'm not done yet, and I don't think the Lord is either. Listen carefully. Jesus said this. Listen. He said, I wish that you were hot or cold. That's what he said, because he's a lover. And this makes sense to lovers. He's basically saying, I wish that you were in or out speaking to a lukewarm people. I want to talk to everybody in the room who was in love with Jesus at one point. And the fire's gone out. And you're no longer burning like you used to. You know, that flame is the flame of love. I want to remind you that there's a wedding coming. There's a wedding coming, and the bridegroom is coming back for a bride who loves him. The Bible teaches that there are wise, this is Matthew 25, there are wise virgins and foolish virgins. What's the difference between the wise and the foolish? I'll tell you. The oil of love, the oil of the Spirit. And Jesus said if we're lukewarm, he would vomit us out of his mouth. You don't want that. He's looking for everything. Just one more time with every head bowed and eye closed. Because this is personal. It's not that you're ashamed. It's nothing like that. This is personal. I want you to forget about everything in the room. You say, Michael, I'm not burning like I used to. I'm not in love with Jesus. I mean truly in love. I don't, I'm not walking with him like I did. I want you to lift your hand. Okay, I want you to step out of your seats right now and come down and take a step of faith right now. Come on. The Lord will meet you here. Come on. The Lord will meet you here. The Lord will meet you. Come on. The Lord will meet you here. Thank you. Look at this. This is awesome. This is what the Lord wants. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on down. You can't pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and not rejoice when people are coming to Jesus like this. If you want to look like heaven, if you want to look like heaven, you have to rejoice when heaven is rejoicing. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Jose, come here. Get on the drums. Help them along. Help them along. They're just not quite excited enough. What matters to Jesus must matter to us. Come on, come on. I want, I, I, we've got to tell the Lord. We've got to tell the Lord. We've got to let the Lord know that we value what He values. Thank you, Lord. Again, those of you in the other building, the Holy Spirit does not know distance. You're going to be as saved as everybody in here. 
and you can fall as in love with Jesus as everybody who just came forward for that flame to be ignited again. Same with those of you watching in your homes. Tonight, right now, a great transaction is about to take place. And we're all going to celebrate this together. For those of you who came forward, would you look me in the eye for a moment? Many of you are crying. The Holy Spirit's already moving and touching you. Sometimes in these moments, I'm tempted to lay hands on people, and I realize I don't need to. Because the Holy Spirit's beating us to the moment. He, he knows what He's doing. He drew you here. Would you just continue to look me in the eye right now? Everything changes. You'll never be the same. And after this moment, you'll never be reminded of your sin again by the Lord. The Bible teaches that He will separate your sin in you as far as east is from the west and throw it into a sea of forgetfulness. <laughs> you will leave here a child of God. You will leave here born of God, completely redeemed, and your body will become the house of the Lord Jesus by the Holy Spirit. This is incredible. And the reason, the reason that's so incredible is because it doesn't matter where, you're, where you go from now on. You need to go, by the way, to the places he sends you. Don't be dumb and just go anywhere you want. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you. So it doesn't matter if you're driving or in church. The Lord will be right there. And in your body, a fountain will rest forever that will never move. The fountain of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, if you drink of this water, you will never thirst again. You'll never thirst for the things you ever thirsted for. Because Jesus will satisfy you with himself. Are you ready to give him your life? Okay. I'd like everybody in their seats to stretch their hands towards these precious people. And I want everyone who's come forward to lift your hands to the Lord just to offer him your life. This is wonderful. I thank you for the privilege, Lord of allowing me to be a part of this. I want us to say this and say it out loud, everyone in the house. Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you. And I'm so sorry. Forgive my sin. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse my soul. Forgive my sin. Jesus, I believe that you came to the earth, born of a virgin. You lived a perfect life. That you died on the cross and shed your blood for my sin and the sins of the world. I believe that you died, that you, died. That, you were that you were buried, and I believe, and I believe. That, you've that you've been raised from the dead. You are alive forever, you are alive forever. And, I and I believe that you are seated at the right hand of the Father, and that you are returning again in your glory to rule and reign forever and ever. Forever and ever. Jesus, Jesus, receive my life. Take my life. I offer it to you. And I will never take it back. Take it back. Jesus, Jesus, come and live in my heart. In my heart. Save, my Save my soul tonight. Me for you. You for me. I declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I renounce the devil. And I renounce the ways of this world. And I renounce my own will. And I turn to you alone. Lord Jesus Christ. I repent and look to you. Have me. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Very quickly, would you look at me, please? For those of you who came forward, you do not need to live an up and down life. Struggling with sin, dealing. No, 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 no. You can live a life of victory. The Bible teaches that you can go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. There's a few things you need to do to live that victorious life. Listen carefully. Number one, read your Bible every day. Listen to me. This is daily bread. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. The word of God is life itself. Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Therefore, reading your Bible is a matter of life and death. There's an old saying, either your Bible will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from your Bible. Let your Bible keep you from sin. Amen. Number two, every day pray. You say, I don't know how. The Holy Spirit will teach you. He made it so simple. Jesus said, go into your room. How many of you have a room of some kind? If you don't, I tell our students, you have a car. If you don't have a car, go to the woods. If you have a roommate, I've had people duct tape curtains down the middle of the room to separate. Just find a way. Pray in the bathroom if you have to. Whatever you need to do. Jesus said, go into your room. Close the door. And pray to your Father who dwells in secret. Listen carefully. Your Father lives in secrecy. There's a realm of God you'll never discover unless you go to be with Him alone. Okay? Number three. You need to be baptized in water. That's not a recommendation. That is a command. And some people backslide because they never get baptized in water. The waters of baptism separate us from the old man. They are a watery grave. They cleanse the conscience and they cut us off from the diseased nature of the old man. Now, uh, I would assume there are many of you from different churches. I, and I, we honor all the churches in this city. But if you're looking for a church, I know this church and I believe in the dwelling place. I would not have Pastor Randy on our board if I did not believe in the dwelling place. This place is family to us. If you need a church to help you and to make sure you get baptized and to teach you the ways of discipleship, walking with Jesus, this is a great place. But if you don't, if you're not from the area, this leads me to number four. Find a local church and do not attend. As I said, the Lord's not looking for any more fans. He's looking for disciples, okay? People who follow him. Don't attend church. Become part of the life of a church. Give people your heart as you give Jesus your heart. All right. Lastly, listen very carefully. Lastly, Jesus made a promise. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Why is that important? Now maybe your calling isn't to do what I just did on a platform, but every one of you are ministers. And there are people out there who need Jesus. How many of you who came forward feel so much better? You feel better. You feel a cleanse. How many of you actually feel forgiven and you feel joy? Raise your hand if you came forward and you feel, you've, okay, because that's what happened. Listen, listen. There are other people, your parents, your family members, your cousins, people who need Jesus. Well, that doesn't happen through our gifts and talents. It happens through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that promise is for every believer, which all of you are right now. And tonight, before this night is over, I am going to pray that Jesus himself will clothe you in the fire and power of the Holy Spirit so you can be a witness. Amen? So you can be a witness. Amen? All right. For those of you watching, there's a number there on your screen. It should be, uh, I don't know what it is. I can't remember all the numbers. But just do whatever the screen, <laughs> there we go. No, that's text to give. That's not the one. We haven't received, that's it. More Jesus. Text more Jesus to that number, and we'd love to walk with you. 
Just lift your hands to heaven, would you please? Guys, stretch your hands one more time. Father in heaven. No, 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 you don't pray, just receive. Oh, Father in heaven, I thank you for this harvest. Now clothe them in your glory tonight. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Let their lives be lives of joy and peace and victory. Let them carry their cross and follow you till the day they go home with joy in their heart and a smile on their face. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, can we give the Lord praise one more time? Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're all welcome to go back to your seats. Everything changes now. As they go back to their seats, guys, I want you to tell them, welcome home. And give the Lord praise one more time. Come on. Tell them, welcome home. Oh, don't you love the gospel? Look at this. I love this. I love this. If you're in your seats there, you can be seated. Look at them. They're telling them welcome home. Just love on them. Make sure they feel so loved and appreciated. The greatest decision of their lives. Can you just imagine how family lines are redeemed? generations of families that didn't follow the Lord, now they change in a moment. That these people's children and grandchildren will all serve Jesus. I'd also, uh, as they're going back to their seats, I just want to thank the Dwelling Place team as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, can we, all, can we all just stand and thank God for this wonderful house? Thank you all, all your volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Out of curiosity tonight, how many of you came from outside of Houston? Okay, how many of you came from outside of Texas? Wow, okay. And I, I, I'd just like to hear, where, where, where did you come from? Michigan. Did you fly down or drive? You flew down this morning just to be here. Got up at five. I know the feeling. I won't keep you too long. My prayer is that you just get really touched by the Lord and you don't even know what time it is. Those are the best kind. I want to hear, I want to hear some more. Uh, yeah, yeah, you right there in the yellow. New Orleans. Wow, wow. Where did you come from? Where? Arizona. Nice and chilly there this time of year, isn't it? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back there. Where did you come from? Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, in the back. Chicago. Chicago. Wow. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, over here. Kansas. Kansas. Amazing, amazing. A couple more. Yeah, yeah. New Jersey? You came just for this? Oh, amazing, amazing. Yes, ma'am. Where? Mississippi. All of y'all are from Mississippi? Why did y'all come? You're hungry? How many of you guys came from Mississippi? <laughs> how, how did you harmonize when you just said seven like that? It just sounded perfect. Are y'all singers? No, it sounded like it. Seven, it just sounded perfect. We're going to pray for all you Mississippi people tonight. You don't mind, do you? You're not driving back tonight, are you? Because you might be a little wobbly. Wow. 
Wow. The Lord knows how to draw people, doesn't he? I think this is a great time for us to give to Jesus. I said this is a great time for us to sow. We, um, I'd like uh, everybody from Jesus Image who came in from Orlando, would you guys stand up? Either you're a student or a volunteer. Yeah, we brought our whole crew. And yeah, these are the most amazing wild, Joe, stand up, Joe, come on. The, the most amazing, wild, Jesus-loving students and just, I'm, I'm honored to walk with them. And they're just incredible staff, students, church members. They all came from Orlando. Stand up, stand up, stand up, all of you. Yeah, stand up, come on, stand up. Court, stand up, you and Sabata, come on, stand up. Part of our traveling tribe. And um, we, we came by faith and we require nothing when we come. Uh, but we brought our whole media team that's actually broadcasting for those of you who watch Sunday nights, how many of you watch the services on Sunday nights? We brought, the, they actually drove the TV truck from Orlando all the way here because we wanted to do things with excellence and export what God is doing uh, in the room and do it well in a way that honors the Lord. So we came asking for nothing, but how many of you believe, you guys can be seated, how many of you believe that America needs more nights like tonight? nights that glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the answer for our nation. He is the hope of every nation. The Bible teaches and there is no greater time to sow and to give to the Lord's purposes. I'm not sure if you figured it out yet, but the world has no clue what it's doing. I'm waiting for a big amen. The world is trying. There is one hope. There is one peace. His name is Jesus. So listen, listen. We didn't charge for entry. This is absolutely not about the money. We're just believing God that enough will come in tonight to cover our expenses, which were massive, as you can imagine, to bring the teams and our equipment, and the worship and all, everything, everything that's required, all the travel and the hotels. We have other cities on our hearts. I can only tell you that we're going out west to a very special place, and uh, we'll be going to the Northeast and to other places all over America. We want to take these Jesus nights all over the world once the borders open and flood the nations with the presence of Jesus. Amen? So I'm going to ask everybody tonight to not just be a spectator. You say, I don't have much. Jesus always says, what do you have in your hand? I'm inviting you to do what I've been doing since I was a little boy to invest in what God is doing, and then God begins to invest in what's in my heart. And that's the way to live our lives. So if you'd like to give tonight by text to give, you can text give to that number on your screen if you're watching at home. You can do the same. If this has blessed you tonight, we want to invite you to stand with us. We are going to hear in the next week if we get uh, uh, a certain facility for our church and for our school, we should be hearing in the next seven days, and we have also are under contract on another 10 acres in our city as well. We want to see Orlando become a city set on the hill that the nations will come to and drink from the well of his presence. And so when you sow tonight, I promise you, your offering will go towards making an eternal impact. If you'd like to give your old school, you want to give by envelope. If you, do we have those, Carla? They're on the seats. Wow, you guys are prophetic. Okay, well done. If you'd like to give by envelope tonight, you can just put your cash or your check in there. If you're writing out a check, make sure to make it out to Jesus' image. And uh, are, we gonna, are we doing it in the buckets? Oh, we're, we're doing the whole deal, just like Sunday night. All right. So let's go ahead and put the buckets up, guys. And don't come forward yet. I want to pray. I want to say this boldly tonight. I, I make no apologies for what I'm about to say. Fear has stricken families and businesses and marriages regarding finances. There is no reason for the people of God to fear. In fact, I'm not only, I'm not only praying, praying protection. I am praying that. 
But I'm also praying that God would bless you in the face of fear and in the face of, uh, of turbulence in the nations, that it would be a testimony of God's provision and goodness. Amen? Amen. So let me pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for everything you've given us. Thank you for every dollar, every dime, our clothing, our food, our homes, our families. Tonight we come in worship with an offering. And I pray for everyone tonight who's stepping out in faith. I pray for everyone in the house tonight that you would bless and protect and keep, that you would bring abundance so that Jesus' name would be highly glorified in the nations. Use this generation for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you'd like to give, uh, you can come and put your envelopes, envelopes in the buckets. And again, if you're giving by text to give, go ahead and text that number. Uh, give to that number on your screen, and we will be right back. Pay attention to the videos. We've got some exciting stuff coming. God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus shed his blood. He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again from the dead on the third day to give you life and to prove that he is the son of God who he said he was. Today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And for those who belong to him, he is interceding for them eternally. And that same Jesus will return again. He will crack the eastern sky like a whip. And with ten thousands upon ten thousand, he will return in glory. chief cornerstone. He's the great I he am. Is Alpha. He is Jacob's ladder. Name above every and name. And Omega. Our faith. He is the Son of God. This Jesus. looking for people. The first video is Jesus School. If you want your face set on fire for two years, come. You'll never recover. <laughs> it is the greatest place, and uh, they all have issues there. Uh, as Bill would say, the best kind of issues. And the second video is Jesus 21, which, by the way, is happening December 17th and 18th. Tens of thousands will descend on the city of Orlando to lift Jesus high and this is the greatest time to do it. Some of God's dearest friends will be there with us, but that doesn't matter. The Lord himself will be there on the field with us. And so are, are we, what are we doing? What's, we have a discount for the next 48 hours. If you're watching or you're in the room, we want to invite you, come to Orlando. I promise you, you will never be the same. Come to Jesus 21. It's, wow. That's not even fair, but uh, we're doing it. 
We're doing it. So I would jump on that, and I would do it within the next 48 hours. Amen? Amen. All right. Who's hungry for God? Are you ready? All right. Thank you, guys. This is Michael Jones. He's one of the guys who drove the truck. Michelle and Luke, they drove down here. All right, who's hungry for Jesus? Okay, if I come down, if I come down, guys, we good with lighting? Can I come down? All right. Who cares what time it is? Good, that's the first step. That's the first step. Oh, no. Now I can't come down. Can I? Can I go down there? All right, all right, all right. Oh, I don't need the pulpit. No, thanks, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Good to see you. You look good, as always. All right. <laughs> Who's happy tonight? Okay. Yeehaw. What in the world? All right, let's close our eyes. Holy Spirit, we yield to you. And I ask you, Lord, to come tangibly in your heavy, wonderful glory. Come upon your people. I pray for deep encounters. A heavy, glorious presence to rest on us. They've come from far, Lord. You always honor the hungry. So do what you do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you receive that? Just say amen. Yeah? Okay. Take your Bibles for a moment to Luke chapter 9. Now, yeah, stay with me there, Joel. Uh, the way this night will probably go down is I'll start reading the scriptures and talking, and at some point the Lord will want to do something, and we're just going to go with that. Is that okay? Because that's the only way I know to be. So you, you may be brand new to a meeting like this, but uh, on our best day, none of us know exactly what the Lord's going to do every moment of the meeting. But the presence of the Lord is not generated, it is joined. The Holy Spirit cannot be conjured up. He's there, He's here. He has a purpose for the night. He has a great desire for the night. And uh, he has a plan for individuals in the room. All of you matter to the Lord. And then the Lord has this corporate purpose for the night that's bigger than Michael. Do you understand? He can do all that at once. It's important you understand that. So this wonderful river, the move of the Holy Spirit, as he begins to flow, we don't need to do anything. We can't create him. He's the creator. So all we do is yield. I tell our students, a river is not manufactured. A river is joined. And the current takes you wherever it wants to. And you're Holy Spirit people. If you weren't, many of you just got saved. Now you are, whether you know it or not. <laughs> you're officially a Pentecostal. Only the Holy Ghost can save you. Even if you don't like it, you still are. You still are. Let me read this to you. Luke chapter 9, verse 28. The name of the message the Lord gave me today as I was waiting on the Lord was Jesus alone. Jesus alone. Now it came to pass about eight days after these things that he took Peter, John, and James 
and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men talked with him, who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and those with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were fully awake, they saw his glory. That's not an invitation to sleep on me, by the way. And the two men who stood with him, that being Moses and Elijah. And then it happened as they were parting from him that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now, as I'm teaching, if you feel the presence of God, I give you full permission to give him all your attention, even if that means you thinking you're not paying attention to me. What I'm reading to you is spirit anyways, so... You can't figure it out here. Let the Lord do it. He'll get you right here. Let me read that last part again. Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. We all do that. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were fearful as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear Him. I said, Hear Him. I'm waiting on an amen. Hear Him. And when the voice had ceased, Jesus was found alone. But they kept quiet and told no one in those days any of the things they had seen. Okay, number one. Look back at verse 28. There are certain people who are closer to Jesus than others. Now I realize in today's society that doesn't seem fair. Because we're telling a whole generation that everyone can just do whatever they want and have the same reward. You can't be a Christian and believe that way. Because the kingdom will never be fair. Let me help you. I need an amen from my friends from Mississippi. Where are my Mississippi friends? Okay, there you all are. The wall of power. All right. The kingdom is a kingdom, and the king cannot be removed. You don't even get a vote. You can't elect him, can't impeach him. He's not moving. He has the name above every name. In fact, the Bible teaches that the nations will want, Psalm chapter 2, to break their bonds and remove themselves from the responsibility of this Christ who is the Messiah. And do you know what the Christ's response is? Laughter. Laughter. The Bible says he laughs at the mockery. Part of the kingdom is this, that the king is closer to some than others. Now, I want to say very clearly tonight that you can have as much of Jesus as you want. As much as you want. The Bible says he chose Peter, James, and John to go up the mountain with him. When God begins to draw near to people, it is, an, it is in your presence, by the way, it is actually a test. When people begin to gain something in God that we don't, we have two choices. 
serve them and honor them or attack them? Disconnect from them. Either our insecurity will keep us from them even though God has given them what we need or we serve them and reap a harvest that's on their life. So the Bible says that if we draw near to the Lord, He will draw near to us. Tonight is a massive invitation to draw near to Jesus. So the Lord here takes these three up the mountain. And the Bible says as He prayed, the appearance of His face was altered and then His robe became white and glistening or was filled with His glory. Notice that Jesus' face was altered first. Then he began to shine. You see, we all want to shine. We all want the glory. We just won't give him the right to alter us. (laughs) If you don't let him mold you, he will not clothe you. You've got to give him access to... Get in and adjust you. To form your opinions. Uh, We all come from different walks of life, different cultures, different states, different ethnicities, all that. But before we are anything, we are His. Until that becomes a reality, no glory. And for Jesus to, I feel the Lord now, for Jesus to alter you, he's got to touch you. For Jesus to adjust you, his hand needs to get on you. How many of you want the oil of heaven on you? Okay, okay, okay. Imagine you, you, you've got this beautiful olive oil, the cloudy kind from Israel or Greece or Italy, the unfiltered, uh, what do they call it? Cold, first cold pressed virgin olive oil, unfiltered. The good stuff you get from the hippie markets. You know the one, the one I'm talking about. Y'all can laugh in God's presence, it's fine. And, 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 and that oil is, you've warmed it up, it's precious, it's warm. You ever had warm oil on you? It's wonderful. Healing properties, it's soothing. And you had to pour that oil into a vessel. Would you want that vessel you're trying to pour that oil into, would you want that to move around? Do you want it to be just moving everywhere? Or do you first make sure that the vessel's not moving so that the oil's not wasted? And that's what the Lord does is he, he waits for us, listen carefully, to just stop. To stop what? Everything but Him. To stop listening to voices that are confused themselves. To stop embracing opinions that contradict the scriptures. To filling my mind with the voices that flow from fallen minds. And when that happens, my vessel begins to move all over the place. And you see, the oil is so precious, the Lord knows he can't pour it out in that moment. So the Bible says, why are you cast down, O my soul? If you feel cast down tonight, if you feel heavy, depressed, oppressed, you feel discouraged, you just feel like you're in a rut, well, this is the answer for you. You can be free right now. Why are you cast down, O my soul? That's the question. Here we find the answer. Why are you disquieted within me? 
a soul that's just moving, a mind that's looking at everything under the sun is ultimately going to be a soul that's cast down. A disquieted soul is a cast down soul. But when the heart steadies, God says, now I can pour out the oil. You see, that's why we, that's why Joel's playing. That's why we just had worship. All of this leading up. So you would just look at Jesus for a moment. It doesn't take long. It takes like a, less than a minute. It doesn't take long at all because the bow, the bow of heaven is pulled back. I mean, God wants to release that arrow that's dripping with heavenly oil. You, 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 but God will not kiss a moving target. He, he will not kiss a moving target. You ever tried that? If I go that way, I'm going to mess up everything. I saw that. I want to get to some of you. The Lord will get to you. I'm going to go back to this verse. And then I'm going to pray for you. First we are altered. Say this out loud. First I am altered. Then comes the glory. Mm -hmm. And behold, verse 30, two men talked with him who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. That's not bad company. I said, that's not bad company. Moses and Elijah. It's not bad company. And Peter comes up with an idea and decides to speak rather than just stare. And what Peter doesn't realize he does, he says, I know, I know what I'll do. Here's Jesus shining like the sun. Certainly he needs me to make him a tent. It's amazing how dumb we are outside the influence of the Spirit. We can come up with the, just the craziest ideas. We really can our students have heard this. Adam and Eve's remedy for losing everything was to make underwear from a fig leaf. What's that going to do? The first fruit of the loom. I know it's stupid, but it's still funny, and I, I still like it. Well, think about that. Th think about everything that, that their failure caused, every war, every tumor, Every broken marriage, every broken heart, every blind eye, every deaf ear, every bit of pain, every bit of fallen nature, that every, every world war, every bit of racial division, all of that came from a fall in the garden because they decided to speak to a serpent while they could be speaking to God. And their remedy for all of it was, quick, grab a fig leaf. And that's what happens <laughs> when you lose the glory. You become dumb. <laughs> really dumb. In fact, the only difference, as I said earlier, between the wise virgins and the foolish virgins is the oil. You need the oil tonight. See, God has a different view of wisdom than we do. The wisest people in God's eyes are the ones with the most oil, not the best ideas. Not the best ideas. Not one of our ideas ever wowed the Lord. Not one. Not one. And not, the Lord has never learned a thing in one of my sermons. Not a single sermon has wowed him. Not a single miracle has shocked him. He's never been blown away by somebody getting healed that I prayed for. The Lord is well aware that he's healing them. Well, what's he really looking for? A bride that'll stare at him. Isn't that what happens in a wedding? Doesn't the bride come down as the groom's there watching? And who gives the bride away? But the father? Is the father not preparing a bride in this? I would yield right now. I feel the move of the Holy Spirit. Isn't the bride being prepared by a father unto what? The reward for Jesus? Isn't Jesus worthy of a reward, church? How many of you think Jesus did?
deserves a reward. I do. I do. I'm glad you're clapping. It's fine you clap, but more than your clap, I want you to give him your heart tonight like you never have. You feel the most gentle touch tonight. I just want you to give yourself away. Just one little touch, I'm telling you, can lead to a life-changing encounter. If you feel the Lord is just opening the door an inch, just, just, just wait, and that thing will swing wide open into His heavenly presence. And that's what the Lord's doing. He's, here's the Father presenting a bride, making her, she's making herself ready. The Father's leading her to this great culminating moment as the bride is given away to the bridegroom by the Father as the great heavenly reward. And doesn't she just stare at the bridegroom the whole time? Haven't you ever seen a bride walk the center aisle, the straight and narrow path? The straight and narrow path straight down the middle of the house of God? Straight down the middle of his presence. The center aisle doesn't curve. It's just a straight line. The world behind her, outside the church doors, she's entered a new building, a new place. And there's the bridegroom in front of her. And what are they doing but staring at one another? As a dear friend of mine used to say, the bridegroom. I should say the bride does everything with the groom in mind. And at one moment, they become one. And there's an exchange of rings, an exchange of vows. This is a seal. The Holy Spirit is our seal. And something amazing happens. She loses her name and takes on his. She loses her identity and gains his. She loses the vision of self and he becomes her vision. See, we're telling everyone who they are in Jesus. That's fine. Just don't forget, them to, tell, don't forget to tell them about Jesus. And so Moses and Elijah show up. That's, as I said earlier, really good company. <laughs> and they show up in the glory of God. And they start talking to Jesus about his future death. Do you, here, quick question. I mean, I'm not a theologian. But I am Greek, so that's at least 20% theologian. <laughs> but, 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 here, quick question. They were talking to Jesus about his death. Do you think for a moment they were informing him? Do you think the Lamb of God, the embodiment of the Ancient of Days, didn't know he came to die? What were they talking about? Oh, well, I'll tell you. They were just friends. Just friends. And they had always been his friends. The disciples were deaf. And Jesus would constantly say, I'm, I'm going to die. The Son of Man must suffer and die. He'll be raised again. The Gentiles will kill him. They were deaf. So in this, in this moment, Jesus is looking for friends to talk to about his pain. And since there were none around him on the earth, the Father had to send two friends from glory to talk to his Son. Oh, this is holy. This is precious. That means once I'm a friend of Jesus, I'm forever a friend of Jesus. And Moses was his old friend. Why do you think Stephen called the bush that was burning in Acts 7. The bush from Exodus, he called it a thorn bush in Acts chapter 7. What, do you think, what, what did that mean? That that fire that called Moses was wearing a crown of thorns. That was Jesus, friends. 
Jesus and Moses had been friends for a long time. And now Jesus needed someone to talk to. The father sent his friend. I have a question for you. Do you want him to count on you for friendship? I do. I do. I said, I do. You may think you came here for another reason, but this is why he came. He's looking for friends tonight. Friends, deep, close. Friends he can talk to. Do you know how much of your pain will leave when you discover his? When you tap into his pain, our pain seems to disappear. When we walk through things and we discover that Jesus is in pain with us as the man of sorrows, familiar with grief, we realize Jesus grieves about so many different things and we connect with his pain. Ours just seems to disappear. So Peter sees these friends of the Lord and he decides to build them a tent. Good old Peter. He's something else, isn't he? I can't wait to meet him in glory one day. I'm going to say, you're a lot like I am. Always thinking, I need to help God out. Here's the cloud of glory, the Father in it speaking, the Holy Spirit, the filter of God's voice, this great theophany, the Trinity revealed on the mountain, and Peter goes, I know what I'll do. I'll take them to Gander Mountain and teach them how to camp. Certainly they need my help. The cloud won't do. But I want you to hear what the Lord says, or what the Scripture says. And Jesus alone remained. The Father said, this is my Son. Hear Him. And this is what I want to say to you tonight. It doesn't make me happy. Some of it does, but I understand the pain of it. Listen to me. regardless of how wonderful the people are who God has put in your life, they can only do so much. It's not that they're bad. They just don't have the goods to fix what only God can fix. They don't have the capability. They are but flesh and blood. The Bible teaches when mother and father forsake us, God will not. Does that mean that moms and dads are bad? No. They are precious gifts. But it is to say that there is a place in the Lord where the pain is so deep just by living in the world and doing this thing. There are issues you will walk through that only Jesus himself can heal. Moses can't do it. Elijah couldn't do it. The father said, this is my son. This is the invitation tonight. To take our eyes off everything. Everyone. And while we're grateful for God's friends, we need to hear Jesus again. And him alone. Some of you have been mad at your pastor, wanting him to fix everything for you. I'm coming down here. I don't care about the cameras at this point. Wanting him to fix everything for you. He, he, even if he wanted to, he could not. Some of you are looking to politicians. Some of you have fasted and prayed more during an election than you ever have. Listen to me. Listen to me. I believe in voting biblically. I'm not saying that. But my question to you is, when's the last time you fasted and prayed to fall in love with Jesus? When's the last time you fasted and prayed so that he would walk into your room? I saw more prayer meetings last November in our city. I heard more shofars being blown 
than I have ever heard. More prayer shawls in buildings than I have ever seen. More prophetic words than I've ever heard. Fine, fine. But here's my question. Where's the fasting and prayer now? Because I have news for you. The bridegroom's coming. See that thing on earth, this is unearthed a lot. It's shown us who we are really in love with. So I'm in love with Jesus and that. No, no, that's the problem. That's called adultery. <laughs> you don't get to be in love with Jesus and then like eight other things. That's what a prostitute does. But Jesus is ride or die, all or nothing. It's the only love he knows how to receive. You may want to move. I'm coming that way and I don't want to break those new cameras. We needed those. We, those required faith. <laughs> they were expensive. Oh, yeah. See, we have our Moseses and Elijahs. We trust in a whole lot of stuff. We have more chariots and horses than we know what to do with. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, I'm not joking about this. I saw more fasting this fall. And I could just feel the heart of Jesus going, I wonder if they'll do this in January. Where was it before? Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. We trust in the name of our God. You see, the Christian is married. We don't just become Christians and like change people groups. That's not what happened. We got married. And the bridegroom is looking for love. He's looking for friends, you see? He's not looking for the most gifted tonight. Not looking for the most accomplished. Not looking for the best speaker. And I, theology is important. If you don't know the right, if you don't know the word, you're going to preach a different Jesus. But that's not what he's looking for. He's looking for a heart that wants him. He's not even looking for the greatest preacher looking for a heart that wants him. Why don't you close your eyes right now? Now, Father, just close your eyes. Don't look at me. Father, fall on people. and introduce the beauty of the Holy Spirit. Help me, Rob. Bring me this girl right here. Yeah. I need one more. Ryan, come here, buddy. Yeah. You want to be his friend? Jesus, fill with the fire of your love. Fill with the fire of your love. Trust her. Where did you come from? Just tell me, where did you come from? Where did you come from? Are you from Houston? Yeah, fill her with the Holy Spirit. A wonderful presence here. This is a bridal night. The Lord's preparing the bride. Thank you, Lord. Fill her to overflowing. Come on, why don't you close your eyes right now and just, just begin to love him. 
Just begin to sing in the spirit very gently all over the room. Just very gently, the whole house singing in the spirit. Draw her close. Draw her close. I want the whole house, everybody in the room, begin singing in the spirit, softly, softly, softly. Fill him. Fill him. It's a new day, a new generation who are in love with the Son of God. Use this young man for your glory. Anyone hungry for Jesus tonight? Just, 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 just begin to love him. Just because I'm not the answer and neither are my hands. Neither are my hands. It's the Lord. Look at the Lord. Bring me Colby. It's the Lord. Let's not lose this moment. Been waiting all night to get here. Make everything new. Make everything new. Brand new. Just, just, just close your eyes and let honey drip from your lips. Let honey drip from your lips. If you're brokenhearted tonight, the Messiah heals the brokenhearted. That's what he does. Stay with me, guys. Fill, 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 fill. Fill from head to toe. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, thanks. Thanks for healing all the brokenness in our heart. Restore. Restore, 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 restore. Restore, 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 restore. Bring me this precious young lady here. Come here, man. Dom, Dom, I just heard a song. Dom, go grab the mic. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, every hour I need thee. Oh, I feel the river. Oh, Jesus. Grab it quick there, Dommy. Go ahead, Joel. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Softly down. Fill her. Heal her heart. A little softer, dummy. Softer. That's it. My righteousness. Sing it, church. Oh God, I need thee. Tell Jesus. Every hour. Give me that girl with her knees out. My righteousness. Come, come, come. Oh God. Fill her from head to toe with the beauty of your spirit. Fill. Sing it, church. His presence is wonderful. Every hour. Just close your eyes and sing to Jesus. My righteousness. My righteousness. Oh God, how I need A girl stood up earlier when I asked if she were hungry. You were young. Yep, yep, come, come. I need thee. I need thee. He always feeds the hungry. Doesn't he? Doesn't he always feed the hungry? What do you want from him? He brought you to love him, fill her with 
the love of the Spirit. From head to toe, fill her. Let her leave with more than she ever imagined. Erase it all from her memory. Erase it from her. Keep singing, Dom. Erase it all from her memory. Place it with your glory. Remove the pain and the trauma. Break it. From head to toe. Behold. Behold how he loves you. Again, sing it. Every voice. head to toe. She can come. Yeah. Come. What do you want? Heal. Heal her pain. Keep singing. It's a wonderful flow of God. Fill her. It's overflowing. I need thee. Again. Fill, 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 fill. Where are the youth? Where's the youth that went to camp? Right there. Come, come, John. Come with me. Jess, come on. This is right here. You stay where you are. Stay where you are. Can you pick it up a little, Dami? You guys pray for them. Go. Go ahead, John. Fill them. The power of the Holy Spirit. Fill them. A little more, Dom. Pick it up a little. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. that girl this one here my one defense fill these young people the power of the Holy Ghost I need One defense. My one defense. defense. Oh God. Oh God, how I need thee. I need you more. I need you more. Sing it, sing it. More than yesterday. More than yesterday. I need you more. More than words can say. again. I need you more. More than yesterday. More than yesterday. I need you more. More than words. More than words can say. I need you more. More than ever. Sing it again, Dom. I want Dom. I want Jess. Keep singing, Dom. Ryan. Michelle. Go pray for those precious ladies from Mississippi. Go back there. Get to them. 
more than ever before. you more. Just pick it up a bit, just a bit, just a bit. Let me hear it, church. Father, let the glory of God come upon these ladies from Mississippi. Come on, release the power of God. Fill them tonight. Use them in Jesus' name. Rest on their families, rest on their children. Bring it down a moment, Dami. How many of you ladies from Mississippi came believing that some of your children would, would give their hearts to Jesus and really follow him? How many of you? Raise your hand. Wave at me. I want, I want that lady right there. Bring her to me. The first one. Yep. Keep singing again, Dami. I don't understand all of these things. I just, I, just, I just trust the Holy Spirit. Than ever before. Everyone sing it. I want you by faith to speak their name out in the mighty name of Jesus come to the cross we call them forth come to the cross in Jesus name come on church agree 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 come to the cross in Jesus name all their children let them know the Lord I need thee, oh I need thee. I need Court, thee. can you jump up there? Oh, I need thee. Every hour. Every hour I need Wonderful thee. Jesus. You're under the age of 25 and you are in full-time ministry. Get up here. You're under the age of 25. You're in full-time ministry. Get up here. Every hour. Come get on your knees before the Lord. Sing it, church. Sing it. When you sing, the glory of God falls. Oh, God. Line them up, line them up, line them up. The glory of God's falling. The servants of the Lord. It's the next generation. Oh, keep singing. I'm telling you, I don't know if you can see it, but as you sing, the power of God's falling. You're under the age of 25, you're in full-time ministry. Keep singing. Every hour. My one defense. You're going to need to know this. You're going to need to know this. You, all of you came forward. You're going to need to know this. Sing it, sing it, sing it again. Lift it, lift it, lift it. My one defense. Just start praying for me. Pastor Randy, will you help me with this one? Just go around, just go around, start praying. Again, 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 and lift it, lift it, lift it, sing it, sing it. Jeff, come on, come on, Jeff. Stay with me. The fire of the Holy Ghost on you. Be a faithful servant of the Lord. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Come on, the fire of God's falling on these young, young ministers. Come, Holy Spirit. 
sing it, Dami. Come on, sing it. Come, Holy Spirit. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Preach the gospel and love Jesus faithfully. Look at these children. Sing it, Dami. Sing it, Dami. Receive the anointing. Oh, this is glorious. Receive the anointing. Sing it, church. When you sing, he moves. He moves. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing. Receive. Sing it, Dami. Everything in you. Play those instruments. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Pray for him. Pray for him. Ryan, him right here. Help him, Rob. Pray for him. Receive the anointing. Fill, fill, fill. Raise them up. Fill. Fill. My one defense. young people are getting touched and filled by the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you right now, these little kids, little kids right here. I feel the fire of God here. It, I, I, is there a missionary here? Your home, your home, you're here in the States. You've been on long-term missions and you're back home in the States. You're hungry for the Lord. Is there somebody in the room? Wait, wave at me. Am I missing somebody? Pastor, do you know them? No. Where are you a missionary to? Where? China. Would you sit right there just for a second? How long were you in China? Five years. Pastor, is, do you know this man? Okay. Would you come with me? Just stand here. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this man. I pray that you would fill him to overflowing with the wondrous presence of the Holy Spirit. That he would have a new baptism in the Spirit. That he would spend his days in the latter part of his life filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the greatest achievement, to walk in your presence. Clothe him tonight. Fill him tonight. Let tonight be a new baptism in the Spirit of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. Pick this girl up here. Pick this girl up. Bring her. Bring her. No, no, no. That one right there. Bring her. Grab a microphone. Guys, the Lord's falling on these young people. Thank you, Lord. Turn around, sweetie. Turn around. How old are you? What's happening to you? Um, when I was in fourth grade, I saw heaven and hell, so he's just trying to communicate with me in spirit. What do you feel on you right now? 
I don't know tongues because that's what I'm trying to earn. You're trying to what? Earn tongues. Oh, you can't earn tongues. <laughs> Come here. The Holy Spirit is a gift. So what? What 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 do you feel on you right now? <laughs> Happiness. He just born with me. He just telling me I have something to do. I don't know. <laughs> you can't figure it out, huh? No. How's that earning it going for you? <laughs> Have you given Jesus your everything? Yeah. And what do you want him to do with you? Anything he wants me to do. <laughs> You'll go anywhere, any place? <laughs> okay, anything. close your eyes. You say, Jesus. Jesus. You promised me. Promise me. The wonderful Holy Spirit. The wonderful Holy Spirit. As a gift. As a gift. So I let go tonight. So I let go tonight. And simply receive. I simply receive. Oh, Father, do to her what you did to me as a little boy. Fill her to overflowing. To overflowing. To overflowing. To, to overflowing. To overflowing. To overflowing. Bring her to me. You come. I just want to know what's going on. You crying? Yeah. Why? Because I feel his presence. Because of what? Because I feel his presence. You feel his presence. What does he feel like? It's just, uh, I don't know how to explain it. What do you feel on you? I feel a lot of love. I feel, I feel him. You feel him. What do you want the Lord to do with your life? To use me. To use you. To do anything. Go anywhere. You give him everything now? Yeah. You should see the tears just flowing from her eyes. Lord, she'll need you to do it. I'll just feel how old are you? Feel this fourteen year old girl. With your presence. Come on, I want everyone out there. Dummy, sing it again. I need thee. I need thee. Oh, I need That's it. Thee. Let him have you now. Heavy Just surrender your whole life now. Clothe her in your glory. This is when the wine flows. Late. Bring me that girl in the black jacket. Right there, right there. Come close. What do you want from the Lord? I want him to do whatever he wants to with me. How old are you? I'm 13. You want the Lord to use you? Yes. To do what? Anything. Anything. These are the best answers. Those were, those were sneaky questions, by the way. They were trick questions. You answered properly. Lift your hands to the Lord. They're all saying anything. They're all surrendering. Fill her. Fill her. Fill her. Filler, 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 filler. He's just setting them all on fire. Fill her. That's right. Fill her, Lord. How old are you? Thirteen. Fill this thirteen-year-old girl. 
What's your name? Mia. Mia. Lord, use her for your glory. Give her a prophetic gift. Mm. The wonder of your presence. Mm. When I pray for these kids, I feel the power of God flow. Wonderful, Lord. Wonderful, Lord. Hmm. What to do, what to do, what to do. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Would you all lift your hands? Before I dismiss, I feel that many of you, and I know many of you, have come for a fresh touch from Jesus. I'm feeling something... Uh, I feel like we're supposed to come back to Houston. I, I do, I, I feel that. I feel that. Now here's what, here's what I'm gonna do. Listen carefully. You young people, you just stay there with the Lord. They're crying, they're laughing up here. It's just beautiful. I know many of you have come because you're hungry. And uh, all I can do is lead you to the well. But I can talk to the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to pray right now that His power would come upon you, that His presence would overwhelm you. And when I do, when I do, the only thing I'm going to ask you to do is make yourself available. That's all you can do. Don't strive and don't get in your own way. Just relax right where you are. It doesn't come through our striving. He earned it all. So I just want you right now to offer your heart. And I do feel his power flowing. Those of you in your homes, offer your heart. And I'm going to ask for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Even those who came forward tonight to give their lives to Jesus. Now's your moment. Oh, I feel the Lord. Now's the moment for all of you, not just those. I'm telling you, something's happening right now. Now's the moment. It's the moment to receive. To receive. And actually, I don't even need to pray right now. But I will. because he's hearing our hearts. So let your heart look up, like Miss Kuhlman used to say. Look up, look up, look up. Oh Lord, your people are looking to you. And without you, Holy Spirit, we spin our wheels. We try so hard. And the harvest is empty. With you, all things are possible. Come, Holy Spirit, upon your people. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. That's right, receive. Come, Lord. Come upon your people in power and fire and glory. Come upon your people now. Receive, receive. I can't lay hands on all of you, and I don't need to. 
receive. Receive as these young kids are, just simply receiving. However he comes to you, yield to, yield to that. Come, wonderful Lord. Come in your burning glory. Come in your peace. Come in your power. Come upon your people. Just lift your hands. Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive. Receive. Receive right now. Receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Receive the precious anointing of the Holy Spirit. Receive the anointing of the heavenly dove, the wonderful one. The one who makes you a witness, who turns your whole life into a witness. Receive now. Receive now. Receive that wonderful oil of the Holy Spirit. The oil of the Messiah. The oily one, the anointed one. Receive. Be blessed with the presence of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive. He's touching many of you. Just yield. Give yourself away. Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him in, in the touch. Trust His touch. Trust Him. He's good. Trust Him. Look to Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord. Hallelujah. If the Lord's touching you, just enjoy His presence. <laughs> Wonderful Jesus. Come on, more, more Holy Spirit. Shababa via Damba. More glory. More oil, more Jesus, more joy, more river.
Come on, just a little more. Don't be a spectator. Be a percolator. Receiver. Lord, I thank you for touching people even tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the touch of God. Even tonight, Father, I thank you for encounters as we sleep. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just tell him right now, I want your touch. I want your touch. <laughs> Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And out of his belly would flow rivers of living water. And if you drink this water, you will never thirst again. And the way you drink is you yield. Just yield your heart. The Holy Spirit doesn't come on your brain. He comes on your heart. He comes on a yielded heart. Just yield to him. Thank you, Lord, <laughs> for the refreshing of the Lord. Come on, for the refreshing of the Lord. If any man thirsts, tell him you're thirsty. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing up here, but he, he walked off. And this is too much fun. This is Jesus. The moment is now when God is looking for people. Scriptures and scriptures glory, Jesus. 
God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus shed his blood. He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again from the dead on the third day to give you life and to prove that he is the son of God who he said he was. Today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And for those who belong to him, he is interceding for them eternally. And that same Jesus will return again. He will crack the eastern sky like a whip. And with ten thousands upon ten thousands, he will return in glory. In 2017, we received a word from Lou Engle that we really believe is the word of the Lord for our school, our house, and the entire ministry. Lou said that the greatest musicians in the world, and the greatest vocalists in the world, the greatest worshipers, that they would descend upon Orlando, Florida to Jesus image. And that word began to burn in us, and we began to dream about what it would look like to one day have a school where people would come to worship Jesus and be in his presence and receive his word. And a church was birthed in that same worshiping atmosphere. And what a beautiful opportunity that we have as a Jesus people to come before him and to be at his feet and to pour ourselves out before him. Worship has the potential to unlock things that really nothing else in the world can unlock. And so we decided about a year ago to launch a, an opportunity within the Jesus School setting for those worshipers, for the musicians, for the singers, for the dancers, for the artists, for the poets. And this is going to be a place where you can come and you can learn and you can grow. And we have highly trained instructors who are going to be coming they're going to be teaching instruments. They're going to be teaching vocals. Anything that you can think of with worship, it's going to be there. The worship is not about us. We worship for Him. So we want to invite you to come. Come worship the King of Kings with us. So come and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Come and give your heart to the Lord. Come and surrender yourself to the Lord. And let's be ones that are willing to rise and go. And we decided to name it After Bethany, that wonderful house where Jesus was ministered to, that place where the feelings of Jesus were preeminent. It was a place where he desired to not only move and work and teach and do wonderful things, but a place where he would be adored, a place where he would rest, a place where he would run to so that he would receive ministry. And so now Jesus School, has this space that's been created for all of you who are desiring to use your vocal gifts, your instrumental gifts, your gifts of worship, your dancing gifts, and give them to Jesus. That Jesus would make this a Bethany, that he'd make our lives a Bethany, where he'd come and rest and recline among us. You were created to experience the presence of God in a way that will transform your life, family, and the world. We understand how difficult it can be to find time to attend a school where you study the Word of God, grow in your faith, and build a community of believers. And that's why we created Jesus School Online. 
We believe that the Holy Spirit is unlimited in His reach. No matter where you live or what stage of life you're in, we invite you to take part in this amazing online opportunity. You'll be led by world-renowned speakers and worship leaders. You will be taught to seek Jesus daily, be activated in the power of the Holy Spirit, learn to share the gospel, and build community with Jesus' people from around the world. At Jesus School Online, we are passionate about seeing a Jesus people raised up to shake the nations for the glory of God. You were created for this moment in history. The Jesus people are emerging and we have one ambition. Jesus himself. Will you join us?